The system of education in Slovakia. Preschool attendance is compulsory from ages 5 to 6. School attendance is compulsory from ages 6 to 16. Students don't wear school uniforms. Education at state schools is free. Students are evaluated by marks on the scale of 1 to 5, 1 representing the best mark, 5 representing the worst mark. Education in our country includes nursery schools or kindergartens from ages 3 to 5, preschool education from ages 5 to 6, primary school education from ages 6 to 15, and secondary school education from ages 15 to 19. Kindergarten or nursery schools from ages 3 to 5. Children at the age of three usually go to kindergarten or nursery school where they play, learn social rules, ethics, and how to behave. Attendance is not compulsory. Preschool education from ages five to six. Children at the age of five are educated at preschools. They learn the principles of the alphabet and mathematics in preparation for later school. Elementary education from ages 6 to 15. Children between 6 and 15 attend primary schools. This nine-year school attendance is compulsory. The school year begins in September and ends in late June. Children gradually learn to read, write, and count. There are two terms in a school year. Each term has five months. The school day is divided into five to seven lessons in different subjects with several breaks. The main subjects are mother tongue and math. Other subjects are chemistry, history, geography, science, computer studies, and languages. At the end of each school year, pupils get a school report, a certificate. Pupils have a two-month summer holiday, Christmas holidays, Easter holidays, spring holidays, and a few national holidays or bank holidays. Secondary education from ages 15 to 19. Secondary studies last for four years. We can choose from different kinds of secondary schools, such as vocational schools. These give students the skills needed for a particular job. Students are taught special subjects such as typing, accounting, engineering, technical drawing. We recognize different kinds of vocational schools according to their orientation secondary technical schools, business school, nursing secondary school, hotel secondary school, art secondary schools, and many others. We also have grammar schools. These are also called comprehensive schools. They prepare students for university studies. Additionally, there are special needs schools. These schools are for children with physical disabilities, for deaf children, for children with eyesight, disorders, or learning issues. University education from ages from the age of 19. This is the highest form of education. This education usually lasts from five to six years. We can do a degree, a term of study at a university, in different fields, Slovak universities use a two-month semester or term system, winter and summer semester. We have three levels of university studies. Bachelor's degree. The first degree is the bachelor's degree. It is the lowest level of university studies, and the course lasts for three years. A master's degree. The second degree is the master's degree after humanistic studies or the degree of engineering after technical studies, but they are equal. A doctor of philosophy, a PhD. The third degree and at the same time the highest level of university education is a PhD, a doctor of philosophy. University education. If you are a university student, you have to spend a lot of time self-studying take part in lots of seminars and lectures, take loads of notes, read widely, 
write lots of essays, take exams. Question time. What types of compulsory education are there in Slovakia? Number two. Name at least three types of vocational schools. Number three. How do we call schools that are for children with physical or mental disabilities? Number four. How do teachers evaluate students in Slovak schools? Number five. How do we say gymnasium in English? Number six. What type of education is the highest? Number seven. Name three levels of university studies. Number eight. Name university students' duties. Our school. Our school is a vocational school and at the same time a boarding school, which means we offer accommodation for our students. They stay in a dorm or halls of residence. Every November, our school organizes an open day for parents and new students. To finish secondary education, students have to pass the school leaving examination. This exam consists of an external part and an internal part, the Slovak language exam, the foreign language exam, and some technical subjects exam. From each subject, a student chooses one question that is answered for 20 minutes. Finally, students receive a general certificate of education or a high school diploma. School subjects at our school, foreign languages, mother tongue, history, civics, chemistry, physics, maths, information technology or IT, physical education or PE, professional subjects, management, accounting, typing, applied economy, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, technical drawing. Our school, school building, our school is a large one-floor building with many long corridors and a lot of classrooms. Students' lockers, toilets or restrooms, school canteen, a snack bar, a gym, a playing field, a fitness center, halls of residence or a dorm, school library, labs, a staff room, practice rooms, teachers' rooms, conference rooms, the headmaster's office. Our school, classroom, a blackboard, chalk, a whiteboard marker, a sponge, a notice board, maps, plants, cabinets, rows of school desks, chairs, a teacher's desk, fluorescent lights, a rubbish bin, a wash basin. Question time. Part two. What type of school is our school? Number two. What do we call a school that accommodates students? Number three. What does the school leaving exam consist of? Number four. What do students get after passing this exam? Number five, name at least seven school subjects that are taught in our school. Number six, name some professional subjects that are taught in our school. Number seven, describe our school building. Number eight, what objects are there in a typical classroom? Wearing uniforms. They have many pros, but on the other hand, there are some cons too. Advantages or pros. They hide social differences in families. This means that all students are equal or the same, especially children from disadvantaged backgrounds. They are convenient. Uniforms save time. Especially girls don't have to spend a lot of time in front of their wardrobes thinking about what to put on today. Uniforms support or create a good image for the school. Disadvantages or cons. They can be uncomfortable, they are all the same, you can't showcase your lifestyle, they aren't very trendy. Problems at school. Number one, bullying outsiders. Number two, 
bad marks, or failing exams constantly. Number three, skipping school or being truant. A truant is a school child who misses school without a serious reason. Number four, copying homework and test answers from schoolmates. Number five, cheating in an exam. Students use a lot of cribs. Number six, lack of motivation. Number seven, lack of respect for teachers. Number eight, bad behavior. Students don't follow the school rules. They don't change their shoes, aren't on time for lessons, they smoke in school, talk back, are lazy, cheeky, or disobedient. Problems at school, bullying outsiders. Bullying is a form of violence towards another person who is weak or unable to defend themselves. There are different kinds of bullying, verbal bullying, nasty or hurtful comments, rude remarks, name calling, emotional bullying, gossiping, threatening, ignoring, harming someone's reputation, teasing, physical bullying, hitting, kicking, pushing, hurting, slapping, cyberbullying, young people use the internet to send nasty messages, spread rumors, send inappropriate emails, and inappropriate photos. Question time, part three. Number one, name some advantages of wearing uniforms. Number two, name some disadvantages of wearing uniforms. Number three, think of some more pros and cons of wearing uniforms. Number four, do you want to wear a uniform at school? Why or why not? Number five, name the most common problems at school. There are eight. Number six, who is a truant? Number seven, define bullying and its kinds. Number eight, think of how students and teachers can avoid bullying at school. Number nine, think of how students and teachers can sort out bullying. Steps to becoming a better student. Attend class, take notes, use highlighters to highlight the most important ideas. Learn out loud. Ask questions if you don't understand. Stay away from your phone. Characteristics of an ideal student. Hardworking, ambitious, creative, well-behaved, friendly, respects school rules, pays attention during classes, has good results, isn't truant, is flexible, determined and honest. Characteristics of an ideal teacher. Demanding, fair, patient, friendly, helpful, supportive, encouraging. Has a sense of humor, professional, creative, flexible, organized, keeps promises, moves with the times, uses different teaching techniques, listens to their students, gives clear instructions, admits when they are wrong. Question time, part four. Number one. Name some steps of how to become a better student. Number two, list at least seven characteristics of an ideal student. Number three, list at least 10 characteristics of an ideal teacher. Number four, how do you get ready for an exam? Give some tips to your classmate. Number five, what is your favorite subject and why? Number six, what new subjects would you add to our school syllabus? Why? Number seven, is education essential for you? Why or why not? Number eight, do you need a university degree to have a well-paid job? Why or why not? 